Okay, thank you. I'm pretty excited to be here because this is the first time in Bratislava and the first time I speak at a conference. So please go easy on me. Um, yeah, so the idea of this talk is um, to basically create a Jupyter Notebook and show you some uh, snippets of code uh, to, to show you the API tables API and HDF5. And uh, if you don't want to read the screen here because it's difficult to read maybe, uh, there is a repo here on GitHub uh, and if you go to this link, you can uh, see the notebook on your laptop. And GitHub supports Jupyter Notebooks, so it renders the notebook uh, as an HTML file, so you don't have to install anything. So for this presentation, I need some uh, um, modules, of course. I need OS to do some uh, path manipulations and to uh, get the files, basically, where they are. And I need NumPy to create some data. Uh, pandas, because I'm um, uh, parsing a CSV file uh, to show you an example of HDF5 and PyTables. And of course, I need PyTables. So, um, I created the uh, directory here on my uh, laptop. And here you can see that there is the CSV file. Uh, it would take too much to download it because it's almost one gig. And uh, this is the HDF5 file which is created uh, by reading the entire CSV file. But we will create a short, a small version of this file during the talk. And the CSV file is basically um, a lookup for all the fields that are in the CSV. So I don't know if you are familiar with HDF5, but uh, basically this is the bare minimum that you need to know about HDF5. Um, so basically HDF5 um, stands for Hierarchical Data Format Version file, uh, 5. And it's a, a data model and a file format. Um, it was, I don't know if it's developed the correct term for a format, but it was developed by the HDF5 group, which is a non-profit organization. And it's a format that can be used to store and manage big and complex data. Uh, so basically, you can store any data into a, an HDF5 file. Um, it's basically like a file system, because you can uh, uh, have containers in this uh, file, like groups, and uh, uh, a variety of heterogeneous data objects uh, that are called data sets. Um, as I said, you can store anything in an HDF5 file. You can store images, you can store tables, uh, graphs, uh, documents. Um, and so, in the end, there are three uh, entities uh, in an HDF5 file data sets, so basically these are like files in your computer, uh, groups, so like directories, and attributes which are like the metadata that you can apply t either to, the, um, to a data set or to a group. So I think this picture um, is a little bit better in explaining how an HDF5 file looks like. And um, as you can see, there is a, basically the root of the file. Um, you can, it's called the root and it's uh, indicated with a slash. And every HDF5 file has a root uh, uh, node. Even an empty HDF5 file has a root node. Um, then you, uh, um, you can uh, use the syntax slash the foo to indicate the member um, foo, uh, which is a, a group, for example. And uh, with slash foo slash bar, you you can uh, um, you can basically indicate the member of the group foo called the bar. So it's very simple to to use. Um, as I said, HDF5 is a data format. Uh, so in theory, you could uh, read the specifications and implement your own uh, um, implementation implementation of it. As far as I know, there is only a C library um, developed by the same guys, by the HDF5 group, and it's called HDF5. Um, so it's a C library, so of course we can use it in Python. And uh, at the very beginning, when you want to uh, start a new project with HDF5, uh, you can decide of between two libraries, H5Py and PyTables. Um, so basically, this is the current situation that you, that we are in at the moment. Um, these two libraries have basically different design um, goals. The, the goal of H5Py 
is to be like a Pythonic wrapper on top of HDF5, uh, on top of the C library. So it tries to expose um, all the functionality that the C library um, offers you. Um, PyTables is different because it's more, so to speak, battery included. Um, it allows you to to be very productive with the HDF5, um, but it doesn't try to implement everything. So it's like a, you know a trade-off when you decide to uh, uh, which libraries to use. Uh, H5Py offers basically everything that HDF5 uh, allows you to do. PyTables uh, offers you to have um, more more stuff for free, basically. And the idea uh, of the maintainers is to basically have this new stack where uh, PyTables uh, is like built on top of H5Py uh, just to not reinvent the wheel, basically. So I will speak about PyTables and not about H5Py because uh, I, I will use only PyTables in this talk. So the main features of this library uh, as I said, it doesn't want to be like a complete wrapper of the C API, and it tries to be like uh, it, it. It creates, it provides you with uh, higher level abstractions over data sets, which is an, uh, the entity of the HDF5 uh, format. Uh, it's called PyTables uh, because there are, of course, tables in it. So it provides you with a database-like uh, approach to a data storage. And there are features like natural naming, uh, um, fast searches, and we will see why they are so fast. And uh, something which ca you can do in H5Py, like compression, but it's not, you have to implement it by yourself. And with PyTables, it's already built in. And then there is an undo redo mechanism, which uh, allows you to have basically transactions. So, uh, in an HDF5 file, we have groups, attributes, and data sets. Um, let's forget about data sets for, for the moment, uh, because in, in PyTables, we don't have data sets. Um, the simplest PyTable data types that you can use to store data is called array. So let's see how to create groups, attributes, and arrays. Uh, how to access nodes in an HDF5 file uh, created with PyTables, and to how to access data in a node. Um, First of all, maybe you are familiar with pandas and you know that you can access a, a series in a data frame with df dot name of the name of the series. And you can do the same thing in PyTables. Uh, in PyTables, we have nodes and you can access nodes with a dot notation. Uh, but you just have to follow a certain uh, schema, a naming schema. Um, so with this snippet, we are creating a, a group Basically, this is the simplest thing that you can do in PyTables. And as you can see, the name of this group is my underscore group. So this is nice, and we don't get any error or any warning. If we do this thing, um, we are basically doing the same thing, but we are uh, placing a, a, a space character instead of the underscore, and we get this natural name warning. So it's a warning, it's not an error. So the, uh, the group was created, but the thing is that because we didn't use the underscore, we, di we did use a, a space, we are not able to access my group with a dot notation. We can access uh, the group uh, uh, with this method, with this get node, uh, but sometimes it's convenient to use the dot notation. Um, you can um, access a node by writing the entire uh, path to the node or specifying the parent and the uh, name uh, of the node. Okay, so let's see how to create, I mean, let's uh, see uh, some other snippets where we have some actual data. So here I'm using NumPy to create a one dimensional array, two dimensional array, and three dimensional array. And uh, basically, with this snippet, you can see how easy is that to create data and uh, a hierarchy in the an HDF5 file with PyTables. So, of course, we are opening a file in writing mode, and uh, we are creating an array in the root uh, um, in, the, in the root node of an HDF5 file. Uh, when you create an array, you have to specify a name, 
and in this case the name follows the natural naming convention, natural naming schema, and you have to give it, of course, the data. Title is not required, but it's a nice um, attribute that will be set to the array, and it's basically a default uh, attribute that PyTables provides you with. Um, here, for example, we could uh, um, assign another attribute to the array. You just have to give it a name and a value. And then we can create a group uh, with another name, title. Again, it's not required, but it's nice to have it. Um, attribute for the, for the group. As you can see, it's the very same uh, method. And then two other arrays which are within this group, within the multidimensional data group. So how do we um, basically see uh, which nodes we have in the file? Well, with PyTables, we can use a very s simple um, Pythonic expression, like for node in F, and the F is the file handler, and we just use a function. Uh, in this case, we are just interested in printing the node, but we could do some other things. We could define our own function and then use the function here. Um, so in this case, we are just printing the name of each node uh, which are in the hierarchy of this file. If you want, you can also um, yeah, maybe like this. You can also uh, use other methods uh, that are available in the PyTables API. Um, methods that allow you to select only groups that you want to traverse across, and or maybe arrays. Okay. And how do we select data uh, from a specific node? Well, we have arrays, and arrays can be multidimensional. So there is um, basically um, and something called hyperslab. I'm not sure if, if hyperslab is a general term or is a term uh, um, invented by the HDF5 uh, group. But it's basically... A a pattern or a collection of points in the in, in your array. So, for example, here we have um, the three-dimensional array, and uh, we are accessing the um, elements from two to seven, so two to six included, on the first dimension, and uh, the, the first element on the second dimension, and all the elements on the third dimension. So we are basically accessing um, this thing, this thing, until I think this one. Okay. Okay, but maybe sometimes it's useful to have um, something quicker to analyze HDF5 files. Uh, so maybe we don't want to write a, a Python script to analyze these files. And there are command line tools for that. If you are on Ubuntu, you can install these tools with uh, sudo apt install hdf5 tools. And these tools are um, developed by the hdf5 group. Uh, as you can see here, ls is like the Unix command ls. Uh, it's very similar to it. So with this command, you can see the entire hierarchy of the file. And um, r stands for recursive. And of course, if you remove it, you don't see the nested uh, Arrays, the arrays which are in the in this group, in the group called multidimensional data. Uh, there is another command which is very useful, H, H5 dump, which dumps the content of the file, the entire content of the file, into a uh, text, basically. Of course, in this case, it's super fast because this, this file is like, uh, uh, yeah, six kilobytes. If you have one gigabyte of data, then probably this will take minutes. Um, there are also some other command line tools um, shipped with PyTables. And these tools are basically just uh, Python scripts. Um, there is ptdump, which is similar to h5dump. Uh, but it's nice uh, to have also this tool because you can uh, see the attributes uh, with this tool, so the metadata of your nodes. Um, there is also pt3 which is really nice because you can see the hierarchy here in your command line. Uh, so you, you can see that array1d 
is in the root and uh, in the root we also have this group and within this group we have array 3d and array 2d and you can also see how big are how big these arrays are um, sometimes you need viewers because you want to have a look at the data um, and um, there are other viewers but uh, I here I wrote the uh, three most common ones uh, I use HDF5 view and uh, here, for example, we can uh, open this file with HDF5 view. And hopefully you can see that array 1D is in the root and uh, it contains some data. You can also plot this data. Um, and then within this group, we, we have array 2D and uh, array 3D. And it's really nice because you can uh, basically um, analyze all the slices of the array. So, you can analyze the first slice of the 3D array, the second slice, and so on. Um, okay, but now we can uh, basically explain why um, why I basically I, I I said let's forget HDF5 datasets for a moment. Um, it's because PyTables provides high-level abstractions over the HDF5 datasets. Um, so depending on your data, you might want to create uh, arrays, C arrays, E arrays, BL arrays, or tables. Um, if your data set is homogeneous, you can use these four, these four uh, classes. Is, if it's heterogeneous, um, you might want to create a table. Um, you can create HDF5 files with other tools or libraries, and uh, in some cases, PyTables is not able to map uh, your data to one of these five classes. In this case, it will be mapped to uh, an instance called an instance of a class called unimplemented. So you will be able to see that you have this data set into the HDF5 file. You will be able to do some manipulation on that, uh, but you cannot really work on that. You cannot do like selections of the data because it's not uh, a PyTables object. Um, okay, so what? does it mean? What does homogeneous mean? Um, homogeneous mean, means that all the elements uh, in the data set have the same atom. Uh, atom is a, a basically a, an, an, a, um, a way to represent the type and the shape of uh, the objects. So we will see an example later on with the VL array, but the idea is that an, an atomic object, an atomic element um, it is like indivisible and uh, also it's, it can be accessed with indexing in a, in a particular way. So this is how you create an atomic uh, element. And you have to do it for uh, some of the classes of the, um, like the VL array. So as I said, array is the simplest uh, class that you can use and it's also the fastest. Uh, to write and read from the a PyTables file, but it has its own downsides. Um, first of all, it must fit into the memory, so you cannot have one terabyte of data and use array uh, to store it in an HDF5 file. Uh, also, it's not compressible uh, because it's saved in a particular way on, the, on your memory, and it's not enlargeable, so it's like uh, write once and uh, yeah, you cannot append anything to it. So we already uh, we have already seen how to create an array, but yeah, here I will repeat it. And of course, you can uh, uh, pass a Python list to create an array. Um, C array is um, basically the, the step forward, so you can have compression with the C array. And in the documentation, there are some useful tips how to use uh, compression, how to pick the correct algorithm for your uh, for uh, for your data. And of course, it depends on your data. So if you have um, some data, you might want to use Zlib with a lower compression level, and some other cases, Blosk with another compression level. So I think here it depends case on a case by case, um, uh, case by case. Um, so the API is basically the same. Instead of create array, we call create C array, and we just need to pass filters. Uh, because we want compression. We don't have to use it, but of course we are using C arrays because we want to have compression. Um, sometimes 
uh, I mean, most of the times, probably, you will want to have uh, an enlargeable array. So you want to create some uh, array, which could be even empty at the beginning, and then you want to append some more data to it. So maybe you are running an experiment, and you have 1,000 rows, and then the next day, another 1,000 rows, and so on and so forth. So E, of course, stands for enlargeable. And um, an important thing to remember is that it's enlargeable only on one dimension. So if you have um, a 3D array, uh, two dimensions must be fixed. So it can be enlargeable only on one. So in the example that we saw before, um, where we had this uh, three-dimensional array, you can have, for example, a 10 by 5 matrix, uh, 10 by 5 by n. So 10 by 5 is fixed, and n is variable. So you can have the one slice, and then add 10 more slices. But they have to be 10 by 5. Um, in this example, uh, I create um, some data here, uh, 1 million rows and uh, 5 columns. And at the beginning here, the ERA is empty. Uh, now I'm basically um, filling the first 1,000 uh, rows in this file. So we can see that we have 1,000 uh, uh, records in, the, in this object here. And if I run this snippet here, then I have some more uh, um, rows. I can reload the file. And as you can see now, we have uh, 4,999 uh, records. Um, yeah, so you, you can append uh, any number of uh, ERAs to, to your, any number of records to your ERA. Uh, VL array is basically the last class for homogeneous object. It's kind of weird. Uh, I've never used it, uh, to be honest. Um, but basically, it's good for understanding how the atom works. So um, each row, each record in a VL array um, has a variable number of homogeneous elements. And for homogeneous elements, I mean this atom. So in this case, atom is a vector of two components, let's say x and y. And when you store something in the VL array, you have to store elements which are actually a um, vector of two elements. So you can store 0 and 1, you can store 2 and 3, and then 4, 5, and then 6, 7, etc. So in this case, we are appending, uh, with the first line here, we are appending a single atomic element. Here we are appending three atomic elements, another uh, atomic element, and two atomic elements. And uh, this is how it looks like when you print the, the entire VL array. So it's a list, uh, basically, of arrays. Okay, but the important class is probably table. That's why it's called PyTables. And this is important because most of the time you have heterogeneous data. So maybe you want to store some integers, some floats, and they have maybe different shapes. Um, and there is this class called table, um, which you can use by defining a, basically a schema for your table. Like in your database, you would define a schema for the tables. And in uh, PyTables, you can use a class called isDescription uh, to create the schema of, of the table. Uh, so you literally create the empty, the, you, the, you create the, the description first, uh, you create the table uh, second, and then at this point, the table is empty with the correct schema, and then you fill the, uh, fill the table with the, the actual data. Okay, so let's see an actual an actual example with uh, some data. Um, I put the link here to the Tax and Limousine Commission. Uh, it's, it's a website where you can find all the taxi rides in New York City from 2009 until December 2017. They still don't have the data from 2018. And here I'm analyzing only a single CSV file. Um, each one of these CSV files is like from 800 megabytes to 1.8 gigabytes, so it, it takes some time to download it, and it, of course it takes some time to parse it and to um, store it in, an, in HDF5 files. So, uh, how do I stop this? 
view. Okay. So this is basically the, the yeah okay it's not that important actually but it's the lookup of your for your data because they recently changes the um, basically the schema of these CSV files so from year to year even from month to month they change the um, the, the the stuff that they they are actually uh, using so it's something that you need to consider when you analyze the data. Um, and uh, this is an extract of the CSV file that we are analyzing. It's uh, December 2017. And uh, we have this vendor ID, which is something for the New York City Taxi Commission. And then, of course, you have the date time of the pickup uh, of the taxi and the drop-off time. And uh, some, some more stuff like passenger count, trip distance, uh, etc. So, um, when um, when you when you do some uh, data analysis, of course, you need to understand uh, uh, what your data actually means. So you can um, store your uh, basically information in a CSV file or a PDF file, uh, like they do here. Uh, it's it's here the PDF, but this is kind of problematic because then you have the data in your in one location and the meaning of that data in a different location. And HDF5 is a self-describing format, so you can store basically your data dictionary into the file, which is super convenient and super valuable for something like um, experiments, uh, medical diagnostics, uh, because you don't want to lose this information. You want to know which um, when the experiment uh, was run, uh, who ran the experiment, um, you want to have complete, uh, completely reprodu reproducible results. So we can uh, create a dictionary here, like a simple Python dictionary, and then uh, store the, the meaning of the data in the file. So first of all, we have this, um, these fields and uh, we decide to map these fields to some data types that uh, tape by tables uh, provide provides uh, we uh, as with and um, as i said the the schema is a description um, and these are the uh, basically the columns of your table the, the schema of your table okay so um, now that we define the schema, we can create the table. Now it's uh, it's not even here the file. And uh, with this snippet here, we create the table. Uh, of course, we need to use the same uh, um, API. So we we need to give it a location, a like parent location, name, and then the schema of the table. Title, as I said, it's not required, but it's nice to have. Um, Filters is the compression. And then for each item, we set some attributes which are taken from here. So at this point, we have an object which is uh, like this. So we have basically an empty table. There is nothing here. But we already have the date dictionary in the table. So now we are going to to fill the, the table with some actual data. So we have the CSV file, and uh, here uh, I need to create a function to to parse the dates, because it's um, nice to have maybe timestamps in milliseconds instead of uh, actual dates. And this function here fills the, uh, the table. Okay. Um, it's a big CSV file, so I'm going to uh, read it in chunks, and I'm going to um, append only one uh, one hundred thousand uh, records in this table, because otherwise it would take like twenty minutes. So now we have a table which has some. Uh, maybe I can make it larger. Yeah. So this is basically the, these are the first. Uh, um, 100,000 rows in the CSV files 
which are now in the um, H5 file, uh, HDF5 uh, uh, file. And it's like two megabytes. Okay. Um, so this is basically an intermezzo, but it's it's important to know that uh, PyTables has no expression as a dependency because it will be uh, clear much um, uh, later when we will talk about uh, the searches. So num expression is an expression evaluator for NumPy. You don't have to use PyTables to use num expression, but it's a, it's a really nice package because it, it allows you to have uh, super fast computations uh, with NumPy, uh, with NumPy arrays. Um, so basically what it does is it, that num expression um, is shipped with a virtual machine, which is written in C. So it takes your NumPy arrays and uh, it, it it computes the the stuff that you need to do in C instead of in Python, and uh, also in, it computes the uh, the operations in the cache instead of your in your actual run. So if you have big arrays, uh, then it's definitely faster to use num expression than to use numpy uh, or yeah just Python, and also your code is much uh, is more parallelizable because you, you are working in C, you are not working in Python. Uh, of course, if you have smaller arrays, then you still have uh, some overhead to uh, convert their, the Python code into C code and then load the data into the cache. And, and so it might be even slower than uh, uh, doing the actual computation in Python. So here I put some a small example here, how to create a, a C array without num expression. Uh, it's the same uh, code that we saw before. And this is like a, a, a Python expression. It takes uh, this amount of time. Um, with num expression, uh, we create the array in the same way. Uh, but the expression is basically a string. Um, and then you have to set an output for the expression. If you do like this, it's, uh, it's going to be on, on disk. And, um, it depends on, on your size, but it should be, uh, it's faster if you have big arrays. So if you have a very small array, it's, it can actually be slower, because as I said, yeah, there is this overhead of converting the, uh, the arrays, the array into, into C. But if you have, uh, let's, let's keep it this way. Okay, searches. Um, with PyTables, you can search data in uh, basically four different ways. Two ways are uh, rely rely on Python, and two ways rely on the num expression. So basically, uh, they they are performed in C. Um, with with this tables the table read, you are reading the entire table, so the table must fit into the memory, and uh, you can do it only if your table. Uh, it's pretty small. In this case, it's not a problem because it's uh, it's very small actually. It's like two megabytes. Um, but if it's a uh, one gigabytes, then probably it's not a good idea. You can use another approach, which is iter rows. This one. And uh, here you're using basically a, a list comprehension to uh, to get the results. And it's much faster because it uses an iterator here instead of reading the entire table into memory. Uh, then there are the two um, other methods which rely on num expression. Uh, one of these is read where, and another one is where. Uh, the difference between these two is that um, read um, where is like it's almost like read. Uh, the same same approach, but uh, read uh, but tab table where um, it's like iter rows, so it should be the, the fastest one. But it's uh, it depends on uh, on your data again and the, the size of your data. So uh, table where mm, it's potentially the fastest solution, but it's not always true because it depends on how big your data is. Um, of course, when you are performing searches, it's useful to have indexes. 
and uh, it's useful to have indexes on um, um, on the fields that you're actually querying. And uh, you take some time to create indexes. And the indexes are stored in a particular uh, group, which is basically hidden in the viewer, but you can still see it here. And of course, in this case, it took almost no time because the, the table is, is small. But we will see that with a bigger table, it takes much longer. Uh, I would like to ask Giacomo whether you want to answer also the question, which is... Um, uh, if there uh, are any. There is only one question. But uh, yeah, we are running out of the time, so... Okay. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can close okay. it here. Do you want to say anything more, like in a really short um, sentence? Index, I mean, uh, something maybe about indexing is a, is a complex topic here. It uh -huh. definitely depends on, the, on your data, on the queries that you are performing on your data. So there is um, basically no other way of trial and error. And there are some answers on Stack Overflow that I... I put I put here and I put some other references. Um, Can we find this somewhere on uh, GitHub or uh, will you yeah, yeah, share it's some? On uh, yeah, yeah, it's already pushed okay. on GitHub. Uh, so I guess I have no time for these things. Yeah, okay. we can we can find it afterwards in. Yeah, sure. At the, uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so one question: Like, do I have to specify metadata for each data? Can I also store uh, blobs? Uh, you don't have to specify metadata for each data. Um, uh, yes, you can store blobs. Uh, there is a, um, basically, a, um, I think, a class. It's called file node. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can use this class to store any kind of data. Um, OK. Can you then I think work you can with the maybe data? seek uh, the, this file node. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, it's possible. You can store anything, um, but maybe it's not mapped to a PyTables uh, object. So you can store it, uh, but maybe you cannot work on it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh,